In this video, we're going to learn how to use the predefined preprocessor macros in C. So oftentimes we use preprocessor macros to define constant values for our program. So for example, we could say number define length 20. And this is a preprocessor macro. Sometimes we call it a preprocessor constant. The preprocessor is the first phase in the compilation of a C program. And length will be replaced with 20 by the C preprocessor. So for example, if we say printf length colon percent d backslash n, and then here we have length. This occurrence of length will be replaced with 20 by the C preprocessor. So for example, if we compile our program and then run it, we get length colon 20. Now there are several predefined macros that are just part of the C standard. So we can just use them. They'll just be there for us. So we can delete this. And here we'll output printf file colon percent s backslash n. And then we'll use the predefined file macro. So we'll say underscore underscore file underscore underscore. So this predefined file macro will be set by the C compiler to the file name of the source file that it's used in. So because this source code file is called d.c, we can expect this predefined file macro to be set to the string d.c. We'll try it out. We'll compile our program and then we'll run it and we get file colon d.c. There's another one called date. So for example, we could say printf date colon percent s backslash n underscore underscore date underscore underscore. So the date predefined macro will be set to a string containing the date at which the C program was compiled. So for example, if we compile our program and then run it, we get a date of June 5th, 2022. There's another predefined macro for the time at which the program was compiled. So for example, we could say printf time colon percent s backslash n and here we'll have underscore underscore time underscore underscore and like date time is going to give us a string of the time at which the c program was compiled so we could save this compile our program again and run it and we get back the time at which this program was compiled there's also an interesting predefined preprocessor macro called line it will be set to the source code line number wherever it appears. So for example, we could say printf line colon percent d backslash n underscore underscore line underscore underscore. And because this predefined macro occurs at line 12 of our source code file, it's going to be set to line 12. So for example, we'll compile our program and run it and we get line 12. There's another predefined macro called STDC. This macro will be set to one if the compiler conforms to the ANSI C standard, which is sometimes just called the C standard. So we could say printf ANSI colon percent D backslash N, and then we'll have underscore underscore STDC underscore underscore. So we'll save this, we'll compile our program, and we'll run it and we get ANC is set to one. And that's because we're using the GCC compiler, which does conform to ANSI C. So in terms of where and when we might use these predefined macros, these macros give us information about the internal source code and compilation of our program. So for example, I've seen the file and line predefined macros used to help implement logging. Larger C programs made up of hundreds of files will sometimes use a form of logging to keep track of the execution of the program. So that if there's a bug, developers can trace the execution of the program and figure out what went wrong and where. The program source code will call a log function to write log messages to a file at different important parts of the program's execution. If we can include as part of the log message, the file name and the line number where the log message occurs, this can be used to trace the execution of the program. Because if there's a bug, we now know exactly which source code file and line number to look at. 
Let's try building a logger using the file and line predefined macros. We'll call our logging function logger, and the function will accept three arguments, the log message itself, the name of the source code file, and the line number. We'll also include stdlib.h, so we can use the exit function if there's an error when attempting to access the log file. We'll provide a definition of the function down here. And the first thing we'll do is create a file pointer variable so we can access the log file. Next, we'll open the file. We'll say file is equal to fopen log.txt. And we're gonna open the file in append mode so we can append additional log messages to the file every time we go to write a new log message. We'll check to see if the file opens successfully. So if fopen fails to open the file, it's going to return null. So if file is equal to null, that means there must have been an issue when trying to open the file. So we'll print out an error message. We'll say error opening log file, and we'll exit with the status one. Exiting with the status one is gonna be a signal to the shell, to the terminal, that something's gone wrong in the execution of a program. Next, we can write the actual log message to the file. We'll say fprintf file, and then we'll have percent %s colon percent %d colon percent %s backslash n. And what we'll do is first output the source code file name, followed by the line number, followed by the log message. And the idea is the reader of the log will then see the source code file name and the line number, and then the log message. Finally, we'll close our access to the file. We'll say f close file, and we'll close the file. Now we can try this function out. So up here in our main function, we're gonna try calling our new logger function. We'll say logger task one done. And for source, we're gonna provide the source code file name using the predefined file macro. For the line number, we're gonna use the predefined line macro. Now we can save this and compile our program. And if we test it out, we won't get any output now. But if we check with the log file, we should see a log message with the file name d.c, the line number 12, with the message task one done. And if we check out log.txt, that's exactly what we get. d.c, line 12, and the message task one done. Now, if at some point later in our program, let's say a bunch of work happens in between these lines, we wanna write another log message. We could say logger task two done, and we'll say underscore underscore file underscore underscore, and then underscore underscore line underscore underscore. Now we can write another log message, but we'll know where this second log message took place we'll have a different line number. So we'll compile our program, and again, we'll run it. We'll check out the log file, and we get task one done on line 12, and task two done on line 18. That's very helpful information. That's going to allow us to know where different log messages occurred. When tracing the execution of our program, that's gonna help us narrow down where bugs are occurring in our code. Now, because we're appending to the log file, the first log message from before is still there. Typically, we do append to the log file like this. We might also use the time library to include the date and time at which the log message occurred as well. And then our log file will contain a very useful history of the execution of our program we wouldn't use the date and time predefined macros for log messages because those are the date and time of the compilation of our program, not the date and time that a log message occurs at, which is what we would want. But we might include the date and time predefined macros at some point in our logs because they would let us know the date and time the program was compiled. So that's how we can use the predefined preprocessor macros in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers. 
including courses to help you develop C programming projects.